Okay. It's starting. Okay. Oh, Thank you. All right. Very good. So as Joy said, I'm Pamela Cartier, and I'm the Community Legal Information Center librarian and coordinator. Um, the what Click is is basically the substitute for the State Law Library, which was closed in 2015. So we are your go-to resource for legal information and um, uh, resources. Um, just quickly before I start, because this is sort of one of my pet peeves, um, I, I more often than not, every time I have a patron ask me for legal resources, they want case law. And case law is very important, but there's a priority of resources and it's actually at the bottom most of the time. So when they come in and they say that, I say, maybe you want a case, but maybe we should start with something like a statute or a regulation, which has more authority than case law. So I put this here so that um, if they do come in and um, you sort of uh, they start giving you their life story, just know that maybe the entire answer is not in case law. Um, it may be a combination of things. So the constitution constitution of whether it's a state or federal is the overarching document that every law has to comply with. Um, and then any law that's enacted by Congress, um, in, in our case on the state level, the General Assembly, has very broad laws have the most authority. And then you have agency rules and regulations, which become more detailed. And typically um, they are, are designed because they deal with a specific area of the law. They are created through legislation and then they deal with a specific area of the law. They are supposed to like flesh out statutes or enforce rules of statutes. And then at the very bottom, you have case law or judge made law or whatever, which is um, basically when a judge uh, resolves a controversy between typically two people in a civil case or a governmental entity and a person, and that's criminal law. So it, it becomes more detailed and more specific. And people are always looking for this elusive case that probably doesn't exist because um, it's very specific. Um, in Vermont, because we don't have a lot of law compared to other states, believe it or not, um, and it's the statutes tend to be somewhat ambiguous, it's probably a combination of things that people have to look for. So anyway, this is the hierarchy of how it works. <clears throat> and this is just a sample of, um, I actually have a PDF, which I will give to Joy if people want it to print it out. Um, these are not active links, and on the PDF they are active links. It'll tell you where you can find Vermont's statutes, constitution, agency rules and regulations and opinions. But we're going to go through some of that. But it's just kind of a nice thing because it's an explanation um, for how it all works. Um, we're going to talk primarily about free resources because there are a lot of them out there now, um, which is a great thing. We're not as far advanced as Canada, <laughs> but we're, we are getting better about transparency in this case. Um, not going to talk too much about federal finding federal law because in the vast majority of cases, um, when you have a patron coming in, day-to-day -day life legal issues will probably involve state or local law. They will probably not involve federal law. The um, federal government, I know it seems hard to believe, legislates in a very small area of the law. So the vast majority of the conduct that you engage in is more or less impacted by um, state rules. Um, GovInfo.gov is um, like a one-stop shopping place. So it's a place that you can go and you can search for federal cases, you can search for federal statutes, and you can search for federal regulations, and there's legislative history, etc. It's all there. Um, if you want to search for uh, the code itself, I'll give you the link to searching the United States code. Um, you will see that I have below there that it, uh, samples of both the statute and a citation to a statute and a citation to a regulation. 26 USC section 61 is title 26 of the United States Code at section 61. Um, title 26 is the Internal Revenue Code. What happens is as the laws are passed, they're passed chronologically, and then what happens is, is there's a publisher with editorial staff <laughs> and also the they, most um, governmental entities have a publisher that will put the books together for them. But anyway, they're organized by subject matter, and that's the title. And then within a title, you might have chapters, subchapters, subtitle. It, it can be organized on many levels, but no section is ever repeated, which is why when you cite to it, you're going to do 26 USC section 61. 
Um, same thing on the federal level with the regulations. So that's 26 Code of Federal Regulations, Section 1.61-2, which is uh, a regulation that explains certain types of income in greater depth that are included in your taxable income. Um, just good examples. But I am going to show you Google Scholar because this is probably one of um, the most common things that I send to people, that and court listener. Um, the other, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to go through them. As you can see, when you go to Google Scholar, it's going to take you to arg articles or case law. This is a great way for people to get started if that's what they're looking for. Because we are in Vermont, it's telling me I can select federal or Vermont courts. I'm going to select Vermont. And because I've done this a bazillion times, I'm going to choose divorce and custody. I mean, I would type in the words, obviously, um, but uh, it was easier for me to select them. So it's going to give you now, and if you see at the top, it's going to sh show you that you have 517 results. So these are cases in Vermont that deal with divorce and custody. Um, you can change the date so that if you want something that's more recent, um, don't have to, but if you want something that's more recent, you can do that. Um, if I click on the first case, a great feature about this is I read through it and I say, oh, I really like Paquette versus Paquette. Um, this is a great thing for me. I like the rule. Um, over here in the upper left, it shows you how it was cited. And these are 97 additional cases that have discussed Paquette versus Paquette, and they would have come later in time. So you can see that, you know, it's kind of helping you do your research for you. So you're like, I really like this one, and maybe there's something a little closer to what I'm looking for, and I can go through those 97 cases. A great feature of Google is that if you look over here on the, on the right-hand side, where you see LeBlanc versus LeBlanc, um, you'll see three... Um, darkened blocks or three darkened lines. And that tells you the extent to which that court, the court LeBlanc versus LeBlanc court, how in depth they go in reviewing Paquette versus Paquette. So it's like, okay, they've, they've, they've dealt and discussed it in detail. Whereas if you go down to the bottom, you'll see that Bellotto versus Bellotto only has one highlighted bar, which means it wasn't very in depth. So it may not be something that you're looking for. So it's a, it, Anyway, it's a great resource <laughs> um, because people always want to search for case law. Court listeners, very similar. Um, court listeners, a great resource. I mean, I guess I'll show it to you um, very quickly. Um, only because I believe at this point it has more of a database than Google. Um, Harvard Law School uh, got a grant to digitize all of its reporters. And it had case law from the dawn of each state to 2021, and they digitized it all, and it is now on Court Listener. So um, also an incredibly good resource. The difference is, is you're not going to have that, you know, how much relevance there is in terms of or how much depth there is. So I, mean, I would um, provide both. Another quick thing to look at here is the Legal Information Institute at, Institute at Cornell. Um, this also has. Um, case law, statutes, etc. But the really good thing about that is if somebody wants to learn like uh, what does a certain word mean? They say it's a legal encyclopedia, but truthfully, it's more like a dictionary. Um, so let's see, what was the word I wanted? To, oh, so abuse of discretion. When somebody appeals a case, the review is abuse of discretion. And so somebody comes to you and asks you what that means. It gives you a kind of a general description of abuse of discretion. Um, so I think that encyclopedia is an incredibly helpful resource. Another one, another helpful resource is fine law. So fine law also, same thing, you can find cases, you can find all that cuts kind of stuff. But if you look at the top, it says learn about the law and it has view all legal topics. And these are just really common things that people look up. And if you look over here, we have family law and child custody, and it takes you through, again, the general rules that are associated with child custody, types of child custody, child custody. And it, it also, it's not going to tell you Vermont-specific stuff, but it will direct you to Vermont statutes. So, great resource, too. Um, yeah, and I think that's it for federal stuff, or general stuff. It's more national or general stuff. Um, 
free Vermont legal resources. I suspect many of you know that um, you can find Vermont statutes online. Uh, again, organized exactly like the federal are, not the same titles, but they're organized according to title. Um, here we are, Title 15. You can see that it's Title 15, which is about domestic relations, is organized according to chapters. And then where did I want to go here? Annulment and divorce, which is chapter 11. You can see there's a sub chapter. And then within that, there are so you can, you know, browse it if that's what you want to do. But you can also do a statute search. How come I didn't get there? There we go. Um, statute, statute search on the left. You can also search them in LexisNexis, which is um, the official publisher of Vermont statutes and cases. Um, that is also where you can find them. The agency rules are also located on Lexis. And I, mean, I can show it to you if you'd like. You might do something funky because I have a... Nope, there you go. Um, it's actually kind of a little bit easier to search on here. Um, but yeah, either one of those places is a um, good place for a search. And we have acts and resolves. And the acts and re resolves are essentially the session laws. Um, passed chronologically, same thing happens. The chronic chronological laws are organized and put into um, the, you know, the Vermont state statutes annotated in the Vermont code, as it were. Um, I know this is a lot of material. I'm kind of running through it, uh, but that's why I've kind of given you the links because then you can go back and forth. And also they're kind of organized according to what what's what. Vermont case law, we searched. I mean, you can search any state, any anything on either Court Listener or Google. Um, other incredibly useful resources are the Vermont Judiciary's self-help page. And I have this um, bookmarked on my computer because it's incredibly useful. Um, you can see here, so these are individuals who are representing themselves. These are this resources for them. Um, court forms are located here. They also have information that's organized according to, again, topics where people ask most questions about these things or the most cases. Um, again, you have divorce and parentage. It will actually literally walk you through um, what you need to do, the forms that you need to have, the divorce process, what forms you need if it's divorce or legal separation without children, et cetera. And then there's with or with children. And it literally, like I said, it, it provides all of the information you need to file your own complaint or to answer your complaint or, you know, whatever it happens to be. It's not, they're not going to explain it to you, like uh, walk you through the process of doing it, like filling out the form, but they are actually giving you exactly what you need there. Um, to find that information, we go back here. Um, we're going to go to Vermont Law Help. And all of this is on the one page, which is why I think it's great. Why did we not go to Vermont Law Help here? Continue. There we go. So this is the um, website that is maintained by Legal Services Vermont and Vermont Legal Aid. And again, you will see it organized according to topic. Uh, they, legal Aid and Vermont Legal Services do the same thing. They keep statistics on what are the most frequent things that we have people asking us about, most frequent legal issues. And so that's why you're seeing these um, specific categories. And again, we have divorce. Uh, they have a great video on a roadmap of how to get a divorce. The questions are answered in a um, much less legalese kind of way, um, which is incredibly helpful. They also have a tool that helps you walk through the process of it's like just a question and answer. And when you're done, you're going to have all the documents that you need to file for divorce or to answer for divorce. So it's, a, a um, again, another incredibly useful resource. It's not easy to fill out these forms. I think this is one of the biggest obstacles that people have and the the. Um, just basically just like the question and answer that they take you through um, and then you're all set. All you have to do is literally print out the forms and take them over to the courthouse and you're ready to go. People still have difficulty doing it and that I think incredibly understandable because legal documents are not easy. 
So another fantastic resource also on this main, main page is the Access and Resource Center. Um, I frequently refer people to the Access and Resource Center. They are an organization that was set up and it's right now only in Burlington. I'm not sure they'll ever be outside of Burlington. <laughs> um, but uh, they're at the old courthouse in Burlington, but you can call them or you can email them. And their job is to walk you through the court process and they will actually help you fill out those forms. Um, they're not going to give you the information to fill in. They're going to take your information and help you fill it out where it needs to go. But um, but they are there to help and a, a tremendously useful resource for I mean, you know, the, like I said, those forms are incredibly difficult and people they need that kind of help. Also, if you just have a simple question about what happens in a court process, they should be able to answer those questions for you, too. Like, I know a lot about the law because I've been doing this a really long time, but um, I do not have a lot of experience with court process. So I frequently send them over there when they're asking me a question about that stuff. Um, so as you can see, most of those are here. Um, Gail, you probably have had an introduction to. Um, oh, yeah. And then the other thing is uh, when all else fails and it's a really complicated situation, you're just going to refer people to a lawyer and it can be legal aid. It can be legal services, um, but they have very specific things that they deal with. Um, they get funding for certain projects and you can see that the ones this is probably from this past year. It may change. Maybe not. Who knows? Um, those are the things that they tend to focus on, but also they don't have enough people working. So a lot of times they, they, they can't help everybody, but it's a, it's, it's a good resource to try. Um, another good resource is if somebody has a question, they can ABA Free Legal Answers Vermont. Um, and that is you go to the Bar Association um, website and for Vermont, there are lawyers that will answer one question as long as you meet their um, income level. So it has to be low income type situations. Um, and then there's just the Bar Association. Uh, the Lib Guide that is at the bottom basically is a Lib Guide that I did that will take you to um, resources for a specific subject matter. So again, if it were divorce, it would take you to, uh, you know, finding a lawyer, but also if there were um, mediators or nonprofit organizations that would help you um, guide you through that process. Well, there are a lot of nonprofit organizations. Oh, wrong spot, guys, um, that kind of help in those situations. And then very quickly, um, these are uh, click specific resources. If you could come in, I didn't say that we are located at Vermont Law and Graduate School, the library, um, which is in South Royalton, Vermont, sort of in the middle of the state. Um, we have lots of legal databases, commercial legal uh, databases, um, which are, there is a reason they're expensive is because they provide services and resource and additional features that are very helpful for um, cutting down on how much time you have to spend researching. Um, so we have Lexis, Westlaw, and Fastcase. Um, and there are eight public libraries that are actually now hosting Westlaw. Um, it's a scaled down version of Westlaw. Um, but you can go to them. They are open to anybody. Uh, of their neighbors to come in and use it if you want to do research there. Uh, obviously, we have hard copies of statutes, cases, rules, etc., legal dictionaries, encyclopedias, um, and other stuff. <laughs> so Hein Online is great because it's got a huge amount of law review articles and um, stuff like that. But the best feature of that is that it has all Vermont session laws and historic statutes prior to 1948. So if people are looking for old statutes, it's where I typically go to find them. And then PACER, the federal docket system we have access to, which is if you're not involved in litigation, is a paid resource. Um, it, we don't have practice guides in Vermont. Practice guides are for lawyers, especially who are just starting out, and they tell people, like, if you're going through a divorce, this is what you need to do. As the lawyer, this is what you need to do for your client. Um, if you're buying a house, this is what you need to do. If you're um, suing somebody because they of a car accident, this is what you need to do. It literally, if you need to probate a in a state, it'll walk you through that. We don't have that in Vermont because we're a very small state. Um, so people ask me frequently for documents and or sample documents. And this is typically the place that I go. Can I have a motion for reconsideration? Can I have a, a, 
uh, continuance? Can you have, give me a sample complaint for some sort of personal injury something? I don't really get that very often, but um, so that's been a tremendously great resource that we have here. All right, that's it. <laughs> I'm done finally. Um, I'm here from 1030 to 4, ask me anything. Um, and the library is open to the public from 830 to 4. Questions? It looks like maybe no questions. So thank you. <laughs> that was great. And the slides will be great to have too. And, and yeah, to, I, I will post it. these on Niche Academy. Oh, it looks so like people... um, Myrna's hand is up. Oh, good. But I. Yep, Myrna always has a question. <laughs> so Westlaw Pilot, you said eight libraries have this. Uh -huh. um, could you go a little bit over what exactly it gives? It was a little fast for me to. Yeah, I, a lot of it was very fast, which is why mm -hmm. probably people's heads are spinning. Um, so in a commercial database, you get certain things that obviously you wouldn't get through Google. And one of those things is um, it's an annotated service. So they have editors who go through and find ways to help explain whatever you're looking at. And so these um, libraries have that sort of elevated version that cuts kind of cuts down on the amount of time that you have to spend because they're giving you information that you wouldn't otherwise have. So if I look at a statute, um, a Vermont statute, you will actually have editors who have gone through and found cases that explain the statute, interpret the statute, um, and give you examples. So instead of me having to go look for a case, it's there for me already. Or it may have uh, a citation to a, an article that explains it. Um, so does that answer the question, Rena? Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, oh, yes, that pretty much does. Okay. Okay, thank you. That's it. We're good. I think we're good and ready to go on to Maria. Thank okay. you so much, Pamela. Yeah, sorry it took so long. No, it was great. Thank you. Okay, I will start sharing my screen, which I think will make it. Oh, I didn't want to share. I want to share everything. We're going to see ourselves for a second. And then do you all see a UVM um, yes. presentation? Mm -hmm. Great. Yep. Perfect. Hopefully I can move into presenter mode. OK, great. <clears throat> OK. Well, thank you so much for sharing some time with me and sharing this space. Um, taking some time out of your very busy mornings, I'm sure. Um, so welcome. My name's uh, Maria Avery. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm actually going to quickly switch my display so I'm not looking down and I'm looking up at you all. Um, uh, so I'm Maria. I use she, her pronouns, and um, I'm the community outreach manager for the UVM libraries. A little bit about why I'm here today. Um, oops. Uh, the main mission of my work as a community outreach manager in this role is has been seeking out ways of bringing UVM libraries resources uh, to the state community, to you all. Uh, so this was a perfect opportunity for me to share uh, some ways that you can utilize our resources because we want to make sure that um, all Vermonters really know that we are here to serve them too. Yes, we serve a big population of faculty, staff, and students um, and others, but but uh, we are here for Vermont Vermonters and our communities as well. So I'm thrilled to be here in partnership with the Department of Libraries and CLIC uh, to support the crucial work that um, public and school librarians um, are doing every single day. Maria, can I just interrupt for a second? We can see your notes. I I, I don't know if that's oh, what no. you want us to be able to, but yeah. No, I, probably not. I thought I could just do it. So that sorry about that. Okay. Thank you. Um so 
The goals of uh, my talk today are threefold. Um, I hope to uh, show you how to navigate to some of our resources so that you can feel confident when directing your patrons um, or, or giving them some resource suggestions. Um, I am going to give you an overview of some unique resources that we offer that may be useful supplements uh, to your own library's collections and call out some of our additional services uh, and resources that you might not know about. Um, so uh, we will continue with the head spinning <laughs> with how fast I'll have to go through some of this, but um, I'll go through some selected resources, describe uh, what make them special uh, and how they may be useful to your patrons. Um, and then of course, where to get support if you need it. So we'll get started with that, if that all sounds good. Um, so first off, I wanna talk uh, a little bit about what's already available to Vermonters. And some of this you may know, and some of this you may not know. Um, so we provide research workshops, both on UVM's campus and off. Um, you can request um, to have a Libraries on the Road workshop, um, either in-house here at UVM um, or closer uh, to you at a nearby Extension office, or even in your own library, your home library. And we'll talk a little bit more about the differences uh, between those kinds of workshops uh, in a few minutes, but all three are available uh, to Vermonters. Secondly, we have some reference support. Reference librarians uh, are here to help you help your patrons. Uh, they can be contacted via phone, uh, email, or chat. Um, when you have a question that uh, you're not sure how to answer, or uh, if you have a question um, or a patron that might benefit uh, from one of using one of our resources. Um, we really want you to think of us um, as like phoning a friend. Um, we're really here to help support your work, um, either, even if that's, whether that be a professional question um, about librarianship um, or a, a patron question, if you need, you need some support with a patron question too. Um, Vermonters uh, over the age of 18 can apply for uh, what we call a guest borrower card uh, through our circulation department. Um, and those cards allow users to borrow any of our circulating materials. Um, that in this outreach work, I have found that lots of folks don't know, um, lots of librarians don't know. So I would assume lots of Vermonters don't also. Um, so we really want folks to come and use our space, uh, borrow our materials uh, and take a look at our collections. Um, it's really what we're here for. <laughs> so please utilize that. Uh, we also participate um, in Clover, so you can request materials directly from our collections um, and have them delivered to your library using the courier system that I'm sure most are very, very familiar with. Um, and if you're having trouble getting hand, your hands on anything, um, our, our interlibrary loan department, um, uh, that team um, is always happy to answer questions um, and help you navigate some of that um, if you do have, have an issue. Uh, and finally, uh, UVM Libraries Roundup. Um, this is a, a digest of sorts. Um, I will say that I uh, definitely um, took uh liberties or or uh uh professional um liberties with uh joys um uh, uh continuing education uh lists and emails that she sends out um and and took some inspiration there for these roundups um, that uh, hopefully they're just um, useful to you all and your patrons. Uh, they're there to sort of sort of share events and, and resources that are happening um, or available from uh, the libraries um, or other events and exhibits and things that are happening um, either in the libraries or on campus um, and can also include uh, some topical book lists. Um, to either for you all to either display um, or or get started um, on your own. 
So of course, um, that's all well and good. Um, and I think um, this went forward on me a little bit before, so you may have already seen this, but um, every that's all well and good. But uh, what are we here for today really um, are some digital resources. How do we access your databases at UVM? Well, I'll tell you, you don't. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, you absolutely can, um, but as uh, Pamela was saying earlier, uh, some of these um, databases are very, very expensive. Um, so all jokes aside, this just might not be as straightforward. Um, access might not be as straightforward as you or your patrons expect it to be. Um, as we subscribe to thousands of databases and journals, um, and all of those subscriptions come with very, very big contracts and even bigger price tags. Um, so because of those contracts, a big piece of my job too has been uh, to find creative ways um, to expand the access uh, to our subscription-based resources, uh, you know, without breaking the law. Um, I think my dean is especially um, uh, appreciative of of that bit, the keeping us out of um, out of the case law <laughs> um, section of the of these presentations. Um, <clears throat> so while I'll be talking about databases that you won't have remote access to. Um, there are ways that your patrons, um, that you and your patrons can can get access. Um, so we will quickly run through some of those. So here's how you get access. Um, you can first send your patrons in um, or stop by yourself. We'd love to assist you or your patrons in navigating our resources um, at our public computer terminals where they will have access to all of our electronic resources. Um, so if folks can come to the library and visit, they can have access to all, all of our good stuff. Um, if coming to the library isn't an option, please give us a call. Um, we may have alternative ways of getting the materials you need um, or have suggestions for other ways uh, to supplement that um, specific item with, with something else. Um, just like you all, we, we love getting folks connected with the information that they need. Uh, so please don't be shy. Um, it might even be me that picks up the phone <laughs> um, and, and helps you get whatever you need. So um, know that you have a friendly face or, or friendly voice on the other end um, uh, if you have a question. Um, and thirdly, like I was talking before, uh, schedule a research workshop. Um, you can request to visit the Howe Library um, and have a workshop with me in our classroom. Um, students, patrons, and librarians can then have hands-on access to all of our digital resources with this option. Oops, lost my mouse a little. Um, we can, oh, sorry, I'm on multiple screens and I'm losing my mouse, here we go. Um, uh, we can also uh, schedule Apologies about that. Um, we can also arrange the same kind of workshop um, following that same classroom model um, at your nearest extension office. So this has been one of those creative workarounds um, that I've found to our subscriptions um, and those contracts that doesn't um, result in us getting a, a slap on the hand. Um, and while it's not perfect or seamless, uh, this option at least allows access um, to our resources a little closer uh, to our communities. So if you have a particular group um, that has a, uh, a subject area or a research question um, that they're particularly keen on, please request a workshop. I would really love to work with you and work with your, your patrons and students. Um, for example, in the photo in this photo here, um, I'm working with CVU students after a tour and giving them an introduction uh, to all of our resources. 
And um, another class I work with is a small women's um, business startup with the nonprofit Mercy Connections. Uh, the class schedules a visit to the Howe Library, and I walk them through how to navigate and use our business resources. And then they can get hands-on uh, time to do their research and begin writing their business plans. Uh, it's an ongoing partnership. We meet every semester, uh, so a new group of students come in every semester. Um, and it's a really awesome class. It's a really great opportunity for these non-academics, someone that's not in this world every single day, um, to utilize the, the wealth of information that we, we have to offer um, in, in a way that they might not be exposed to otherwise. So it's a, it's a really fun class. And I hope to, to replicate it in, in other libraries and in other places. Okay, so now that we've gotten most of the caveats out of the way, um, we'll take a look at our website. Um, we'll look uh, at how you or your patrons can browse our digital collections, prepare for a workshop or a visit to the library. Um, and most of the resources I will then talk about later on can be found in this pathway. So we'll navigate hopefully to the library's website. Let's see here, if I can move it on over here. Are you all seeing the UVM Libraries website? Yes. Yep. Oh, cool. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so from here, we'll navigate to this Research Databases tab, this little button here. This will take you uh, to our list of three, all 358, it looks like, current databases that we have. Um, and so you can search this um, list in a number of ways. If you uh, would like to really spend an afternoon running through resources, you can scroll all the way down, but that might make us all a little dizzy. Um, and take a whole lot of time. Um, you can also search by uh, title or keyword if you have that right at the top, um, top of your brain. Um, or if there's something like, say, uh, you heard about a Gale database here today and you were like, I know that it was Gale, but I don't remember anything else about the title. Um, that is so real. Um, you can uh, reduce the list down by going, uh, selecting um, a letter here from this list and it'll reduce the, the list down for you. So if it says, say it was a Gale database and then I, I reduce the list down to just the G's and I say, oh, that's right. It was Gale One File News. That was, that was the one I heard about that I wanted to, to go back to. Um, so that's one way uh, to kind of browse the list. Um, you can also uh, reduce the list down by information type. This is a type of database. We have uh, quite a few. Um, so you can look just at our newspaper resources, for example, or our reference resources. Um, and you have to actually conduct the search and then it'll, it'll uh, reduce the list down again, 84 uh, databases that are considered reference. Um, and lastly, I want to talk about subjects. You can search by subject here. Um, you can take any of our areas of study and reduce this list down again. Um, so if you know you want to be doing, say, biology research and you want to see what we've got um, in terms of biology, you can conduct that search and it'll reduce the list down to everything all about biology. A few things you might have noticed here as you were to, uh, conduct that search um, is first, um, best bets. Best bets um, are, are highlighted up here in um, this yellow box. Um, and what a best bet is, 
um, for us is just a particularly good place to start your research, um, a particularly comprehensive resource um, that our librarians have have deemed the the best place to get started. Um, or again, that's particularly comprehensive. Um, and those subject librarians uh, will also be um, show up here um, over on the right hand side of the screen with their contact information. So this is Christy. She's our biology um, and sciences librarian um, and also any relevant research guides. These are uh, libguides created by our faculty librarians um, and they um, many of them and especially the ones that are going to come up uh, with attached to subject resources um, will be really general even though um, they might their audience might uh, feel like it's geared towards students or faculty at UVM um, they're not tied to a specific course um, or class so they really can be a good introduction to uh, the information landscape um, of a specific uh, topic specific uh, subject we also have um, on almost all of our uh, pages the Ask a Librarian widget. This is our chat widget. Um, I, you can get access uh, to a reference librarian um, right here where you're needing that support, that direct, direct support. Um, if the reference desk is closed, um, it will offer ways of um, leaving a question for a librarian um, so that you will get you will get your answer um, either pretty quickly or either like immediately or or within the day or so. Okay. Think. Cool. Um, how are we doing on time? We're still feeling good. Okay. Um, so now that you know where some of these uh, resources live, uh, we'll move into some examples of the things that we subscribe to. Um, I wish I could uh, demo all of them for you, uh, but we would be here well into 2025, so we won't be doing that this morning. Um, but so this is just a selected list of some multidisciplinary um, databases. Uh, some are considered best bets here at UVM, um, and they might be ones that you're familiar with, Academic Search Premier, Web of Science, those things. Um, others, and this goes for uh, my following slides as well, uh, you may not be as familiar with, um, or your library uh, uh, might be light, light less likely, excuse me, uh, to subscribe to them. So these lists were selected with those things in mind, uh, but there are so many others, of course, that I could have included. So I encourage everyone to browse um, as they're able, but I'll call out um, a few uh, from all of my lists just to give you an idea. <clears throat> so for example, uh, ABI Inform, um, on this list contains um, is one of the largest business databases um, and contains citations and some full text uh, articles from scholarly journals, popular magazines and newspapers, um, and uh, some full text business cases, conference proceedings and dissertations. Uh, another example that might be useful to your patrons is the Filmmakers Library Online. This resource provides streaming uh, video access to documentary films, um, including some award-winning productions. Um, and uh, it provides full transcripts of those as well. Um, so I'm thinking like if you had a patron with a really um, out there documentary request or a group of high school students interested in filmmaking or documentary making, um, this might be the perfect resource to direct them to during a visit uh, to our library or during a workshop or something. So those are just some highlights of multidisciplinary databases. Moving on into um, some subject highlights. Um, while many of our databases um, cover lots and lots of topics, there are still more that are, are subject specific like we talked about before. Um, and these resources are 
particularly useful for deeper dives um, into a topic and when a research question uh, requires more uh, specialized information. Um, again, some of these resources might look familiar to you um, and to your database uh, savvy patrons. Um, and then while they're still more narrowly focused than something like Academic Search Premier, a resource like uh, Environmental Complete um, in the Agriculture List um, is an EBSCO product. So looks and functions basically identical to, to all of the other um, EBSCO products. Um, in the business world, however, something like IBIS World, a very powerful uh, marketing and business database, uh, would not lend itself well to general research on how, you know, the beginning steps to, to starting a, a business. Um, it is, however, uh, extremely useful when developing business plans. So I use that a lot with my Mercy Connections class. Um, cause it also has things like demographic information, economic indicators, um, and consumer behavior. So way more in depth, um, than you would want to get, um, say in your first week of business planning or something, um, very, very nuanced research. Uh, some other examples, uh, education is of course a huge area of study across the state, um, not just here at UVM. So it's very useful that we have a wide array of resources here uh, that address lots of topics in this area. Um, and I'll I've just highlighted a couple here, but we have many, many. Um, but ERIC, I'd say, is the preferred search tool in the field um, of education. It contains scholarly and practitioner-oriented articles uh, from peer-reviewed review journals, um, papers given at conferences, scholarly reports in education and the behavioral sciences, um, and there's a large, large amount of full text content right in there. Um, there's also a free access point uh, to Eric's content at eric.edu.gov, um, which was when uh, making this presentation was news to me. I didn't realize that they had um, a free access point. So that was that was a really great find for me to teach myself while I, I also <laughs> collect resources for y'all. Um, additionally, PsychInfo um, is the most comprehensive database for literature in the psychological sciences. Um, it houses international uh, schol scholarly articles in peer-reviewed journals, book chapters, dissertations um, in psychology and education. Um, and it's one that really crosses uh, over between psychology and education. Um, so they work together nicely. Lots of people are dipping their toes into psych info and using Eric, for example, at the same time. <clears throat> Just a couple more. Um, I have a feeling, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that that researchable data isn't always at the forefront of a public librarian's collection development plans. Um, so I've also included a call out to the Inter-University Consortium for Political and Social Research. This um, is a resource that has data holdings that can encompass a large range of academic disciplines. Um, a few include political science, sociology, history, economics, public health, criminal justice, and, and way, way more. So lots of data there um, if you have a patron that has data um, needs, information needs. Um, the social science full text um, is a resource that provides access to scholarly and professional literature in a wide range of social science areas, um, including uh, anthropology, communications, gender studies, uh, and social work, of course, among others. Um, and I know in talking with public librarians um, around the state uh, that many in the library profession feel like they are social workers. Um, and in so many ways you are. Um, and this goes for a lot of public facing or, or service oriented professions. Um, so 
taking a look at the social work literature might be useful. Maybe it's it's way overkill, but might also be useful. <clears throat> Maria, um, our, yes. Maria, can I just um, interrupt? Um, how much are more do you have? What we, we are running close. To, I want to give Josh at least some time to go over his Beautiful. stuff. Beautiful, so. yeah. Yeah, um, I will uh, end it, he it here. I can end it here. That's fine. Um, I have other things on health and medicine and newspapers and uh, popular uh, publications that folks can take a look at on Niche Academy. Great. Thank you so yeah. much. And if you send me those slides, I can post those too, so people can browse through them and yes, and click the course. links. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks all. Uh, Joy, I'm totally happy to leave time for questions for Maria uh, in case there are any right now, because this is probably okay, a good yeah, spot for that. Good idea. Yeah, Myrna. Um, this is not necessarily a question, but it's a comment. Uh, one of the issues that we have in a small library is trying to, to have resources that are up to date, especially in the field of medicine. You know, people come and want resources because their partner is having um, you know, some medical issue or their children are, you know, diagnosed with autism. And when I looked at our books, they were so dated. Uh, so I was lucky to be able to access some books from a library that was closing near us from a, from Carter College. So we got some new uh, newer resources and that was great. Um, but I would see where this would be a more specific place to go search for, um, you know, Parkinson's disease or dementia or memory, that kind of stuff that is really hard to keep updated materials. And my, I guess you would then locate them and then borrow them through interlibrary loan. Is that how it would work? Yeah, I, I would assume so that you could be able to um, uh, request those via interlibrary loan. Um, absolutely. Uh, there are also um, a whole host of consumer health resources that are publicly available. Um, some of them are more uh, accessible uh, than others in terms of um, uh, the language that they use, right? They should they should be um, all pretty accessible to the run of the mill person, um, but some are are better at that than others. Um, I will also just put a plug uh, that I am currently uh, working toward the consumer health information specialization um, and hope to offer consumer health workshops um, in the new year. So. Um, let we should we should definitely connect on that and and maybe there's a way that um, I can help support those your your patrons that are having those questions too. Can I just hey, interrupt you. for a I'll second, Myrna? I don't know if you're available, but this afternoon at two o'clock there's a webinar from the Network of the National Libraries of Medicine on rural health resources. Um, I'll put a link to that in the chat. Their uh, webinars are always free. And then I did also put a link to PubMed in there too. They are super helpful with helping people navigate through their many, many free resources. Thank you, Joy. I do have to start work at that time, but um, I'm sure I could access through Niche. It'll probably be in Niche, the webinar. Um, it won't be on Niche because we're not presenting it, but they do record their webinars as well so if you register you'll get a link to the recording so i'll send okay. you i'll put the thing in the chat okay thank you oh um maria there is a question in the chat for you as well and can you see it it's is it possible okay. to share the resources for the business course that's available each semester at how um i can absolutely share the resources that i use um and that those resources do include some publicly available um, things, but I will say things like Ibis World, um, 
uh, DMV Hoovers, those kinds of things um, are our uh, subscription databases. Um, so we would have to to connect either on campus or at a at a workshop or something for those, but I can share those those free ones. All right, I guess I'll jump in. Um, uh, thank you so much, um, uh, Maria and Pamela. That was awesome stuff. and. And cool. So uh, we scrunched mine a little bit, uh, I'll admit, because this is stuff that you've probably heard before. Um, it's the the Vermont, uh, the, the resources that Department of Libraries make available. Hold on, let me get this shared up. So we're going to do a pretty quick uh, version of this. Um, but of course, you, you may have already seen this before. And if you haven't, uh, we'll have the PowerPoint available, but also you can always reach out to uh, me and we can walk through the resources that we have. Um, all right, so basically, this is the summary of the main resources that I thought were relevant here. Um, so we have uh, Vermont Online Library, uh, which is our uh, stack of Gale resources, um, which is there for predominantly research. Um, uh, we have a couple of categories for that. Uh, and then the other ones that are worth being aware of uh, are Peterson's Test and Career Prep. Uh, that is uh, academic and career help. Uh, more career than academic, uh, I will say, but um, then we have Udemy. Udemy is only open to public libraries, uh, but is uh, online video courses um, on a wide variety of topics. Uh, legal forms, which Pamela already mentioned, which is literally what it sounds like. It's much narrower than the resources that Click offers, but it is specifically, if you know what you need, it has forms that are either Vermont specific or national. Uh, and then Chilton Library, which is focused on um, auto repair tools. It's uh, uh, in the olden days, libraries and other people had a lot of the paper copies of uh, Chilton uh, and other resources. And now most people don't because it's hard to manage those, but uh, Chilton gives a huge variety of maintenance and sort of auto uh, uh, repair advice on a lot of products, um, a lot of cars, not all cars, but a lot of cars. All of these resources are available uh, to Vermonters statewide, and they're all free. They're also free to libraries. Um, people can go through their libraries to get them. Um, and uh, But we're always happy to elaborate on how they work and what you will find in them. Um, I think that, um, I think rather than, than marching through the slides, because that gives us um, the, the sort of the short, short version of it. Uh, I think rather than marching through the slides, I will suggest that we will have the PowerPoint and that um, I'm always happy to elaborate as much as you want on any of these resources, um, how people use them, how you access them, um, and uh, what you can get out of them. Uh, and again, these are all available through um, to anybody in the state um, uh, and through uh, uh, except for Udemy, they are uh, available to all three um, public uh, schools and academic libraries. Um, and let me go to the last side because that's really the, the kind of most important, which is for questions, you can reach out to me at joshua.muse at vermont.gov. And again, always happy to answer questions. I'm also happy to do a little um, just do a little uh, mini webinar where we talk about what's available for whoever is interested. Thank you very much, Joy, for putting that in there. Um, uh, and again, the, the the PowerPoint will sort of talk about what, if you're interested in it, um, some of the usage cases for some of the specific resources that we have. Um, yeah, okay, so that was a very quick uh, rendition of that. But again, I think this is things that mostly people probably have in the back of their mind, even if they, uh, even if some of the specifics aren't there. Um, does anybody have uh, questions on um, my stuff that they'd like to ask on the, the Department of Libraries resources? Again, I know that was a lightning tour, so it's hard to have questions on on, on that, but. Okay, it looks like maybe not, but um, no. yeah, we'll post these slides <laughs> and um, Josh is available to help walk you through things. I'm speaking for him now, but he did say that too. So I think I can say that. Mm -hmm. So I did put a evaluation form in the chat. It's short, if you could fill it out, that would be helpful. And thank you again, 
to Maria and Pamela for being here. And of course, to Josh for always being here. And thanks to everyone for coming. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. Yes, thank you all.